A statement made in English and then a statement will be made in French and then we'll take any questions that you might have. So. You know? Okay, you got to move a little bit to the left. I'm, I'm just I'm sorry. squat right in. So. This is so tight. Very close. <laughs> they are telling them to take a step this way. So okay. there you go. Perfect. Sorry about that. No, no, no. I get it. I get it. Okay. Good day, everyone. I want to thank everyone for being here. My name is Chris Aylward, the National President for the Public Service Alliance of Canada, and I'm joined with uh, Sharon D'Souza, our National Executive Vice President, and Alex Silas, our Regional Executive Vice President for the National Capital Region. Last night, at approximately 7 o'clock, a little after 7, the employer sent an email to our bargaining teams, many of them standing behind me, saying that they are not moving from their position. My friends, they still have 9% on the table over three years. And they're telling us, they're telling us that we have to move. That's not how bargaining works, Madame Forche. Once we make our pass, then the employer is supposed to come back and make a pass. They did not do that last night. I'm calling on the Prime Minister again today to get involved in these negotiations and to settle this dispute. The Prime Minister knows exactly what it takes to settle this dispute. The Prime Minister has one of two choices to make. He can either get involved personally and help settle this dispute, or he can turn his back on the workers who are striking, predominantly women, making forty to $65,000 a year. If the Prime Minister can turn his back on these striking members, he will turn his back on every single worker in this country. Bonjour tout le monde. Merci d'être ici. Hier soir, l'employeur a envoyé un courriel à nos équipes de négociation à 19h pour dire qu'eux avaient fini pour la journée et qu'ils ne bougeaient pas de leur position. La position de l'employeur est toujours 9% sur 3 ans. Il s'attend que nous, on va bouger de position. Ce n'est pas de même ça marche les négociations, Mme Fortier. Les négociations, ça se passe des deux bords. C'est des discussions des deux bords. C'est clair que Mme Fortier est déconnectée de la réalité que vivent les travailleurs et travailleuses dans ce pays. On fait appel au premier ministre Justin Trudeau de s'impliquer pour qu'on puisse régler un contrat équitable et mettre fin à la plus grande grève de l'histoire du Canada pour que ces travailleurs dédiés à la population canadienne puissent retourner au travail pour continuer à fournir des services à la population. Le premier ministre a deux choix. Il peut soit se rendre à la table pour conclure une entente raisonnable avec des salaires équitables qui suivent le coût de la vie, ou le premier ministre peut se tourner son dos sur les travailleurs et travailleuses de ce pays. On se rappelle que ce groupe de membres en grève, les membres de la FPC, c'est un groupe de majoritairement des travailleuses, des femmes, qui gagnent entre 40 et 60 000 par année. Pour un gouvernement qui se dit féministe, c'est hypocrite. Donc, on fait appel au, au gouvernement, au premier ministre, de se monter à la table avec une entente raisonnable pour qu'on puisse conclure une entente et mettre fin à cette grève. Merci beaucoup. Quelle a été votre réaction quand vous avez reçu ce message-là hier soir? Comment, comment, comment vous avez trouvé ça? C'est respectueux? Comment vous avez trouvé ça? Absolument pas. C'est un manque du respect totalement. C'est frustrant. C'est décevant de la part de ce gouvernement. Nos équipes sont à la table, ça fait deux ans. Dans les trois dernières semaines, on est ici à Ottawa, prêt à négocier jour et nuit. Maintenant, c'est un moment où on devait, on devait être en train de négocier jusqu'à 2 heures du matin. Puis on est prêt à le faire, nous autres. Puis c'est la même histoire tous les jours. 
L'employeur nous dit à 19h, 20h, nous autres, on ne finit pas la journée. Ils ne sont pas placés, il y a un manque de proactivité, puis il y a une inaction complète de la part de ce gouvernement pour régler cette grève, puis il laisse tomber les travailleurs et travailleuses, et ce gouvernement laisse tomber les Canadiens. According to the employer, I mean, if you look at what the employer is doing, simply saying no, we're not coming back with another offer, they are stalling. The employer is stalling these negotiations. As I said earlier, they're still at 9% over three years. We've moved off. We have moved off our wage demand. But yet, the employer hasn't moved on their wage demand. And yet, they're telling us that we're the ones that have to move. How far do you need to make a final offer? How far do you need to They have never even said that. They have not tabled a final offer at all. We have not seen a final offer. They did not say it was their final offer uh, last night. Uh, but you'll have to ask Mona Forte if that's their final offer. Mona Forte called that offer that, 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 that the union gave unreasonable and unaffordable today. So well, what's that offer then? What is, what is, is, what well, is she if calling? Mona, if Mona Forte can say that our offer is unreasonable, trying to keep our members who make forty to $65,000 a year, if she's saying that that's not affordable, how the heck does she expect those workers to continue to live and to keep up with the rates. What was the number? What was the number? We, we, we have compromised. I am not going what to negotiate mean? in the media. What I'm not going to give you. I'm, I'm simply mean? telling you that we moved off our wage offer. The employer, the, the employer still has not moved off their uh, wage demand of nine percent over three years. What about work from home? Does that have to be in the collective agreement? They've been telling us now for a week that they're working on something regarding uh, remote work. We haven't seen anything yet, and th and that's the problem. They keep saying, coming to us, saying, well, if you agree on this, there's something else over here. What that something else is, we don't know, because we've never seen it. Does that would, right would have you... to be in the collective agreement, though? Can it be outside of that? The government says that's a management right. They won't go that far. Every, almost everything in our collective agreements are managerial rights, such as hours of work is a managerial right. The argument that Mona Forte is making that this is a managerial right and they can't put it in the collective agreement holds absolutely no water whatsoever. And as, as a matter of fact, Mona Forte should start reading some of our collective agreements because in every single one of our Treasury Board collective agreements, there is a clause in there about managerial rights and that nothing in that uh, collective agreement can contravene those managerial rights. So Mona Forte is going to have to find a new argument for that one. Do you feel there were progress on that particular issue? Yes, we, we, we made some progress uh, on that particular issue. Uh, but again, if this employer just continues to say that they're not moving off your position, where do we go? So th that's, that's the dilemma that we're in. But I can tell you, as you look around here today in Ottawa, and I can tell you right across the country, members are still out in strike. We still have over 100,000 members on strike, and we're going to stay here until we get this resolved. The Prime Minister is being very patient this morning. No frustration at all. How do you react to that? Well, obviously, the Prime Minister should be out here just like Mr. Singh was a few minutes ago from the NDP, joining these workers and trying to tell these workers why he can't get involved and why he can't help settle this dispute, because that's what he needs to do. Because, it, because uh, Prime Minister Trudeau has to get the message that he's the one who can help settle this dispute. And if he's going to turn his back on these uh, over 100,000 workers that are out on strike, then that is absolutely shameful. The, the sure. Prime, Minister, sure. Prime Minister Trudeau calls himself a feminist. Most of our members who are on strike, the vast majority of them, are women. How can the Prime Minister say that he's a feminist when he's completely ignoring these workers? If you say you won't negotiate with Monia Farsi anymore, Prime Minister Trudeau has to get involved with these negotiations. Mona Fortier said this morning she was frustrated. She said there were no progress. Uh, what are you responding to her saying she's frustrated? Mona Fortier expects the union to negotiate with itself, and that's not how collective bargaining works. Mona Fortier and Treasury Board has got to come to the table with a, a deal that's fair and reasonable that keeps our members in line with inflation. We've said from day one that that's what we were looking for, and we're not backing off that. If the feds don't back off this and continue to just give the same offer over and over again, what are your options? Where do you go from there? Do you walk away from the table? You're already on strike, so what are your other options? We're hoping to get to a deal at the table. And again, if the Prime Minister gets involved, that's very possible. The Prime Minister knows exactly what it takes to settle this dispute. And we're asking him to make sure that he gets involved to help settle this dispute, to get our members back to work serving Canadians that they so dearly love.
Well, what, what is it? What, 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 what is this thing that it'll take? It's very vague. You're saying, why can just the prime minister snap his fingers? And what's what's the offer you think that he's going to give you? That's because the, it's, the, it's up to the prime minister and the minister of finance to come with a new mandate. If the if treasury board is saying they can't move off their wages, that means treasury board needs a new mandate from the prime minister and the minister of finance. So they need to open up the purse strings of the, of the treasury. Well, I mean, as I said, they're telling us that 9% over three years is their mandate. They need to get a new mandate. Prime Minister Trudeau, you can give them that mandate. How long can you clarify strike pay? How deep are your pockets? How long can you go? We'll, 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 we'll be out here for as long as it takes. Do you, do you still feel that you have uh, the calculation support after eight days, or do you feel it has maybe shifted since, since day one? From the Angus Reid uh, uh, poll that was done on the weekend, uh, it appears that most, the majority of Canadians support this because they know what we're asking for is only fair and reasonable for these workers. These workers are, are not making six figures. They're, they're not senior executives. As I said, making forty to $65,000 a year. Sir, that was five days ago. How do you feel now? Do you feel that the population is still behind you? Yes, I, I do. Quite honestly, I do. Because as I said, what, yeah, we're, as yeah. what we're asking yeah. for is fair and reasonable. That simply keeps our members in line with the rate of inflation. Every single worker in this country deserves a fair and decent wage increase. As I've said before, corporations are making record profits. We're getting gouged every time we turn around, but yet everybody wants to repress the workers. Uh, and and that's, that just doesn't equate. That doesn't uh, compute at all. So workers are fed up, and you're going to see more of this right across the country, with workers being fed up and saying, we've had enough, we can't live like this, and walk off the job. Are, would, would you accept the 9% if they open up on everything else? No. Next question. That's that's a question for uh, the minister of PSPC. Will your will your all of your members fill out the forms to get their pay uh, withdrawn retroactively? That again, that's a question for the government, not for the union. The uh, we 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 said since 2012, the Phoenix pay system doesn't work. It still doesn't work. Our members are still not getting paid properly, payday to payday. The Phoenix pay system is still a mess. Over 400,000 cases still in the backlog. I can't answer any questions on Phoenix. You'll have to ask the minister that. Thank you very much for being here, everyone. Thank you. Solidarity! So, so, so! Solidarity! So, so, so! Solidarity! So, so, so! Solidarity! So, so, so! Solidarity! Thank you. Thank you. Que son offre n'est pas raisonnable, je suis d'accord, l'offre n'est pas, pas raisonnable. Je pense que Mme Fortier est déconnectée avec la réalité que vivent les gens qui travaillent dans ce pays et les, les membres de, cette, de, de la FPC qui gagnent entre 40 et 60 000 par année euh, puis qu'on a mis à joindre les deux bouts. Euh, elle ne comprend pas c'est quoi la réalité pour les travailleurs dans ce pays, elle est complètement déconnectée. Quand elle dit qu'elle est frustrée, vous répondez quoi? Nous, on est frustrés. Oui, nous, on est frustrés. Ça fait deux ans qu'on est à la table de négociation. Ça fait deux ans qu'on essaie de tous nos moyens. On a donné plusieurs options à ce gouvernement pour qu'on règle une entente, puis ça traîne leurs pattes. Il y a un, complètement un manque de volonté. Il y a l'inaction totale de la part du gouvernement Monsieur pour régler ce, ce, cette ronde de négociation. Pourquoi vous ne voulez pas dire les chiffres que vous avez mis à la table? Parce qu'on négocie. Il n'y a pas dans les médias. Nous, on veut négocier à, à la table. C'est ça notre intention. Vous négociez dans les médias, M. Silas. Vous Absolument êtes ici pas. en ce moment. On est, ici, on est ici en grève parce qu'on mani on manifeste pour des salaires équitables qui suivent le coût de la vie. Il y a un compte équitable pour les membres de la FPC et aussi pour établir un standard pour tous les travailleurs et travailleuses dans ce pays qui méritent des salaires qui suivent le coût de la vie. Comment Merci beaucoup. 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 Merci be